Allah. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would often cry when he remembered paradise and the fire. And everything that I'm mentioning to you today, we hear it on a daily basis. How often do we recite the Qur'an or hear it being recited? How often are we reminded of the fire and paradise? But how often does it bring tears to our eyes? Our hearts have become so hard that even if someone was to tell us about all of the torments and punishments of the fire, we consider it something which is normal. We just pass by like it's someone reading a newspaper article or someone telling us about their last holiday that they went on. We continue as if nothing has changed. It has no impact upon our hearts. The Prophet the of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What about me and you? With all of our sins, all of the wrong that we do, all the sins that we commit by day and by night, and we can't shed a single tear from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't shed a single tear in our prayers, reciting the Qur'an, making dua to Allah, not a single time. And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who will be given the greatest of stations on Yawm al-Qiyamah, can cry like this until the ground around him is wet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Recite the Quran during these times. How often when we hear of the calamities that strike around us all over the world, how often do we cry that Allah Azza wa Jal has saved us, that Allah Azza wa Jal has showered us with His mercy, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown forgiveness to us subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a very beautiful hadith, one that applies to each and every single one of us here today. عُرِضَتْ عَلَيَّ الْجَنَّةُ وَالنَّارُ فَلَمْ أَرَاكَ الْيَوْمْ فِي الْخَيْرِ وَالشَّرُ Indeed, both the hellfire and the paradise were presented before me. I saw them. And I have never seen anything the likes of it ever before, either in terms of the goodness of paradise or in terms of the evil of the fire. وَلَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا أَعْلَمْ لَضَحِكْتُمْ قَلِيلًا وَلَبَكَيْتُمْ كَثِيرًا And if you knew that which I know, then you would laugh little and you would cry much. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, mentioning another virtue of this crying out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would often do himself to be a role model and an example for us. He said, لا يلج النار رجلا بكى من خشية الله حتى يعود اللبن في الضرع But by Allah, a man will not be touched by the fire. If he cries from the fear of Allah until milk returns to the udder of the cow. Meaning that it is impossible that a man who cries or a woman who cries from the fear of Allah will ever be touched by the fire. Will ever be touched by the fire. Seven people will come on that day and they will be given the shade of Allah, the shade of the throne of Allah on the day they will find no other shade. And from amongst those people, وَرَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ خَالِيًا a man who remembers Allah in seclusion, alone, when no one can see him, he remembers his sins, he fears Allah, and then he begins to shed tears. Tears come from his eyes. How simple it is to cry. It doesn't take any money, it doesn't take any um, immense amount of energy, but it takes sincerity. And so when a person cries from the sincerity of Allah, when he has no other reason to do so, no one can see him, no one can witness him, no one can hear him, then Allah Azza wa Jal will inshaAllah afford him his shade on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would often cry. His companions would come to see him, would come to meet and greet him, and they would find him in the state of crying. He would cry in his prayers, he would cry reciting the Qur'an, he would cry when the Qur'an was being recited to him. He would cry sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Shakhir radiallahu anhu mentions that I came to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I found him crying in such a way that it was as if a boiling pot was about to have its lid taken off. When a pot of water is boiling and you have a lid on top and that lid is shaking, it makes a certain sound. And that whistling sound was what he heard from the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet of Allah Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would often cry when making dua. As a sign of humility and humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To show your need and poverty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When was the last time that you cried in your dua to Allah? We ask Allah for so much. 
We want him to forgive us and to give us Jannah. And we ask for everything and anything. Yet how many times have we shown our need and poverty to Allah simply by crying? Crying to Allah when we ask of him. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as is narrated by Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, he says on the day of Badr, the night before Badr, there was not a single one of us except that he was asleep, resting in preparation for the battle. And I looked and saw the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the only one from amongst the whole army, standing at night in prayer, crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not only cry in his du'as, but he would cry in his prayers. When he, is, when he is praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking for forgiveness, he would cry. Aisha radiallahu anha mentions that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once came to me at night and he said, Oh Aisha, leave me alone this night. Don't bother me this night. Allow me to worship my Lord. And so Aisha replied, Oh Messenger of Allah, I love that which you love. So do as you please. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to pray. And Aisha radiallahu anha didn't sleep, but she watched him praying. And she says that I saw him standing in prayer. And he was standing reciting the Quran. And he began to cry until all of his cheeks were full of tears. And then he sat down and he continued to pray and he continued to cry until all of his beard was wet. And then he continued to pray and continued to cry until the earth around him was soiled with his tears, wet from his crying. How much he must have cried for the earth around him, the ground around him to be wet. For the tears to come down and to actually make the ground wet. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was crying, secluded, no one seeing him, alone with his wife sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she says that he continued like this, the whole night, praying, crying, until Bilal radiallahu anhu came to call him to the Fajr prayer. And he entered and he saw him crying like this. And he saw the ground around him wet. So he said, O Messenger of Allah, you cry like this, even though all of your sins have been forgiven. The past, the present and the future. Yet you still cry like this. And he replied, Afala akunu abdan shakura. Should I not then be a grateful and thankful servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That was the From that which will bring tears to your eyes, is that you hold yourselves to account. As Umar radiallahu anhu would say, hold yourselves to account today before Allah holds you to account tomorrow. And weigh your own actions today before they are weighed for you tomorrow on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. This will bring tears to your eyes. And finally, so my dear brothers and sisters, to cry is a part of our religion. To cry, it is a form of worship. To cry in your prayers, to cry when reciting the Quran, to cry when making dua, to cry when you are reminded about the hereafter, to cry when you, are, when you hear about paradise and the fire, it is from our religion and it is from the character that a Muslim should possess. It is something which we need to do, something which we need to, to, to make some effort in because most of us are unable to cry. We are unable to cry when we hear the recitation of the Quran. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that those who don't cry when they hear the recitation of Allah, their hearts are harder than rocks. Harder than rocks because even rocks tremble from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And mountains go into dust because of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From that, Alhamdulillah,